I'm gonna eat. Alright, so we're going. So this is using, making a cantilever to go on a 14 high tie to open deep bites. This video as we're making it. Yeah, go ahead. So you do a bend like this. So we're gonna roll it out. Okay. Good. Okay. So, because I know this patient needs a little torquing out, I'm going to twist a little like this because mm -hmm. you already know. Yep. Right? So, now we need to do a little curve here because this is going to hook between the canine and, and, the, and the lateral. Mm hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm sort of just mark around where I, I'm going to start the, the curvature, okay? Then you can use one of those, uh, those pliers that are appropriate for, for curvature, or you can do it yourself like this. Okay? Yeah. So as you're going to... As you're gonna be measuring, you don't want the you don't want your cantilever to be too tight on the molar tube, mm -hmm. nor too tight here, because as you're reversing the curve, you will procline incisors and increase the the arch the arch length. Mm -hmm. So, so then you don't put it there. You go a little bit forward like this, so you have some clearance mm -hmm. from the tube. Yep. And then you can mark it here, right in the middle of the space. See? Yep. Now, we can go with the tubing. You measure the tube, as I told you, because the patient might feel some some discomfort due to the to the edges of the rectangular wire. Mm -hmm. and you're saying you can use tubing or closed coil. Closed coil. I I'd rather you like thinking the thinking. More, no, no, but but thinking well, the closed coil. The closed coil might be better because of the hygiene. Mm -hmm. See, it doesn't have to be. You can leave it a little bit here, here. Mm -hmm. Then you move up like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you go like this. You bring it back. You move a little bit higher, and you do your little. Um, Hook, yeah. Because the wire is rectangular, you gotta do it this way and twist it afterwards. I think you saw it first time I was doing that. Yep, you did. So you do it straight. It's just easier. Then you grab it here, and you get a 90, 90 degrees bend like this. You go a little bit over because of the arch wire. Mm -hmm. so it's probably like 110 degrees or something. Okay. Cool. And then can you show it unhooked, just show the activation? And you always, you tell the patient that it's hooked, because mm. eventually if it comes off, he'll know is just to put it over the wire. Yep. If you have hooks like this, and you want to increase the distance so it won't hit, mm -hmm. you make the your coil a little bit a little bit larger. Yeah. So the wire will go a little bit lower, and you make this a little a little higher too. Yeah. Too bit. I don't like doing as you do as as little as you can because if it gets too too much down, it, there's a bigger possibility that it will hurt the patient. So the activation is here. You hold the helix, mm -hmm. grab that part. Normally, to, to give you 80 degree 80 grams, it's probably to the to the deepness of the, the vestibule. Okay. But it's I always I always suggest that people should use uh, one of those uh, dynamometers. Mm -hmm. to measure the, the... Awesome. So, do not cinch back. You can cut it. It won't come off because there is some... because between the spacers, mm -hmm. uh, it will stop here and will stop here. Mm -hmm. So, it won't come off. So, you, you cut it there. 
because as as you're leveling the curve of speed, the length will enhance, and if you cinch it back, it might hit the some place where you don't want it. Yeah. So it'll probably it's, if it if it gets stuck here in the middle in the mesial of the canine and you cinch it back here, mm -hmm. it might not allow an increase of the. So if you have rotations on the premolars, you won't get the space. Yeah. Okay. So you just leave it there. Yeah. Great. Very cool.